Okay. Well, it looks like I am back as host again. So we will go live here in about one minute. I'm gonna, when we do, I'll uh, get things all set up here. But so anyway, guys, I'm looking forward to this one. I think it should be a lot of fun. Uh, we've got a lot of different uh, areas we're gonna cover. So we should, this should be a good one. So it's six o'clock, so let's go live and I'll introduce everybody, you ready? Ready. Well, hello, it's uh, six o'clock. It's Life's Copilot's uh, expert panel. And this one is gonna be a fun one. We've got, we haven't, when we first started doing these panels, we would bring in people from different, all kinds of different areas of the senior services uh, community. And we kind of got to the point where we started doing specializing just in one area. I thought it was about time we start letting people know all that's out there again. So some of the different uh, areas that we can we can serve our uh, our patients, our clients, whatever, our friends, our family. So I want to not waste any more time. I want to introduce this panel. So we'll get you all going here. So Belinda, you're the one that's in my screen here. So we're just going to pick on you and let you start. Tell me who you are, what your company does. And take your time, okay? You know, everything, because you, I know for you, I want to put my feet up for a second because you guys do a lot of things. So go <laughs> ahead and take off and let us go. Thank you, Jim. Thanks for the introduction and for inviting me to be on the panel tonight. I'm very happy to be here. At Amada Senior Care, what we do is provide in-home care to seniors so that we they can keep them living safely and independently with dignity in their home, which could either be in a private home or in a community, wherever they live, or we will go to where they are and take care of them. We're the only home care agency in the greater Indianapolis area to have an A plus rating from the Home Care Standards Bureau, which is the most respected third party senior certification organization in the industry. We're experts in identifying, navigating, and obtaining funding for our clients, seniors. Um, and we help with long-term care insurance. Most notably, we will do free policy reviews, file all the claims, and take care of all the headaches so that our clients don't have to worry about it. We also help with veterans aid and attendance. We can also convert life insurance policies to pay for home care as well as help seniors use the equity in their home to pay for home care. Our care um, includes non-medical things like bathing, dressing, toileting, medication reminders, transportation, all of those things where you might just need a little bit of extra help that will allow you to stay, again, safe, living safely and independently wherever you call home. That's awesome. That's quite a list of things that you guys do. So Lisa, you're next up here for me. So introduce yourself and what it is you and your company do. Thank you so much. Um, my name is Lisa Reed. I'm the senior account manager for Caregiver Homes. Um, what we do is we provide structured family caregiving services. And what that entails is um, for an individual that is needing assistance with three activities of daily living. So if they need assistance with um, medication oversight, meal prep, bathing, dressing, toileting, walking, things like that, then they may be very eligible for the program. Um, if they're fortunate enough to have an individual that's committed to being their caregiver and that lives with them, they may be very eligible for the program. Now, what we provide is two things. So one, we support that caregiver financially. And then number two, we provide a care team to that caregiver. And that care team just truly supports that caregiver so that they have all the resources and um, support that they need to provide the best care for their loved one. Our team, um, it consists of a nurse and a care manager. Now they don't go out into the home, but what they do is they communicate with, on a daily basis with that caregiver. So they coach, they train, they mentor that caregiver, and they're just there every day to support their needs. They just truly help that caregiver um, navigate the healthcare journey that their loved one is on. 
And then a second thing we do, um, I oversee a team that we are part of the expedited Medicaid program for Indiana. So I have a team of individuals. We actually do the Medicaid application. We do the A&D waiver for individuals. And then we bring on our services in seven to 20 days. So instead of them having to wait three to nine months, it's quite amazing that in seven to nine days or seven to 20 days in that Indianapolis market, we seem to average about seven to nine days. Um, it's a truly wonderful program. So thank you for allowing me to join you. Excellent. Jeff, tell me who you are and what you do. Well, my name is Jeff Stinson. I am a certified elder law attorney, meaning that I uh, have been tested and peer reviewed and um, otherwise have a substantial, substantial portion of my practice in areas that affect elderly and disabled individuals. Um, say it differently, I can say that I'm a specialist because I've been certified by the National Elder Law Foundation. I work with families who are concerned about long-term care, whether it's an urgent crisis or someone just kind of looking in advance. And so I basically help people afford long-term care without being completely impoverished. Often we're doing this by helping folks access Medicaid or VA pension benefits, which are programs that have built in, we'll call it safe harbors and other mechanisms that you can legally protect assets. Um, even though these programs have limitations on eligibility, you don't have to be completely destitute before you apply. I also assist families with just planning for the future. So a lot of estate planning, I uh, work with a lot of families who have family businesses or farms and are concerned about protecting that for the next generation. And sometimes just families that just otherwise wanna protect an inheritance for their loved ones. So we're doing a lot of pre-planning in that event as well. Also do some probate work, working with uh, uh, folks uh, in need of guardianship, uh, helping settle estates and, and work with trustees to, to wrap up trusts. Um, and finally, I, I spend a great deal of my time working with families who have special needs children or special needs individuals themselves. Um, a lot of these are either through planning for what happens when mom and dad who've been primary caregiver and advocate and just that person ground helping ground that person, uh, what happens when they're no longer able to serve in those roles. Um, or I work with a lot of disabled individuals who have come across a windfall, whether it be a, a lawsuit settlement or a, excuse, a lawsuit judgment, a settlement or an inheritance, and just help folks protect those, those, uh, those uh, assets from being completely eroded, maintain their benefits that they've had for a long time. Um, I've been around 20 years now, if you can believe that, and spent some time as a paralegal before that. So uh, that's kind of me in a nutshell. I'm in the Northern Indianapolis area and uh, love what I do. Excellent. So when I win the Mega Millions thing, I give you a call tomorrow, right? So that uh, works. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm yeah. counting on it. Sure, so. I, and I'll give you a nice referral to someone who can handle that amount of money. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> So, well, you know, the ones I've been winning have been $2 and $4, so we're probably okay. Uh, all right. So, Rebecca, so we'll stay on a theme here. So, tell me sure. who you are and what you do. So, well, good evening, Jim. Thank you for having me here. I'm Rebecca Geyer with Rebecca Geyer and Associates. Similar to Jeff, I'm an estate planning and elder law attorney. It's an office here in Carmel, Indiana. We meet with families in a number of different situations. We will work with them when they want to do estate planning and make sure that they have appropriate documentation in place to assist them in the event of an incapacity or a death to ensure that their assets pass to their loved ones in the manner in which they want them passed. We do a fair amount of work with individuals and families who may no longer be able to remain as independent as they once were, and we consider ourselves a resource provider, so we connect them with other resource providers like those here on this Zoom chat uh, to assist in helping to keep their loved one independent for as long as possible. And that may be working with individuals to assist in providing them with appropriate housing or bringing in resources to keep them in their home so they can remain independent as long as possible. We deal with Medicaid issues, Medicare, VA issues, and even Social Security issues sometimes. 
Uh, similar to Jeff, we also deal with full service estate administration. When someone passes away, we help them collect and administer the assets appropriately. And we also do prenuptial agreements, some real estate work and special needs planning. So we do uh, a lot of similar things and actually Jeff and I work together often. So it's wonderful to see him on here. And I also teach elder law as a uh, professor at the McKinney School of Law here in Indianapolis. Thank you, Rebecca. Jack, tell us who you are and what you do. Our road warrior here. Uh, hello, thank you very much for letting me be on this. I, I sure appreciate it. And I enjoy all of you and listening to all of you. Uh, my name is Jack Barlow. I'm with AMRAMP. I'm the administrator. Um, and that basically means I do everything. Uh, <laughs> I'm on the road quite a lot, like Jim said. I, I have a large territory. I go up almost to East Chicago, not quite into East Chicago, but uh, so almost to the corner of uh, Northwest Indiana. I go uh, all the way to the border of Michigan, uh, into Ohio as far as I want, and down to Bloomington, um, and then over just north of Terre Haute and all the way over to the Illinois border. So I'm all over. So if somebody needs, needs my help um, from the Zoom meeting, it's a real good chance that I'll be able to take care of you. Uh, what we do is we provide accessibility to the home. Many times I have seniors call me in um, literally in tears uh, because they said the nursing home said I can go home, but they won't let me go home till I have a ramp. And so they're stuck in the nursing home. And so it's my job to make sure we can get them there. Uh, we, we do sell the ramps or we rent them, whichever works out best for the, for the uh, consumer. We also have platform lifts. Uh, in a few cases that, that comes in real handy. Uh, we have stair lifts inside the house or outside, either one uh, to uh, allow the uh, homeowner to go upstairs or downstairs into the basement. Uh, gives them a lot more accessibility inside their house. I am a, a certified aging in place specialist. So I do uh, know what to look for in the house, how to help them in the house. We don't do a lot inside the house besides stair lifts and grab bars, but I'd be more than happy to go through and show people you know, what they need to do, like pick up rugs, um, make sure they don't trip over a rug, uh, you know, adjust some things in the house that look for appliances that would be uh, very easy for them to use, uh, disabled people. Uh, so, and I'm, I'm more than happy to do that also. Uh, one of the things that I enjoy about this is helping people learn how to stay in their home. Uh, I had a, a father that um, was a, a very large man and my mom couldn't take care of him. So he had to go to the nursing home and every day he would ask, uh, can I go home? Can I go home? And that's dad, we can't take care of you. I didn't know all the stuff was out there. So Jim, I appreciate you doing this. That, that helps me, me to understand what's available uh, and would have really helped before I got into this industry to maybe have my dad stay at home a little longer. Uh, he wasn't able to stay at home because I didn't know about the things. And uh, we had a tragic incident which I, that's all I can say about that. So it, it really is uh, near and dear to my heart to be able to help people get home. Uh, one, our niche in the industry is to be able to do it very fast. Uh, we had an insurance company call me and say, hey, I need to get this ramp in for these people. They were about an hour away from our building um, but it was about five o'clock at night. I said, well, I'll go up and take a look at it. So I took off, went up there, got home about, by the time I did all the measurements and everything, I got home about eight, nine o'clock at night. But the next morning, uh, they, we, we installed it for them. So it, it took one day to get, it, get them in their house. Um, so people in nursing homes and hospitals are very, very happy to be able to do that. Uh, and last, um, we're actually owned by a company called Pathfinder Services. I know a lot of you probably never heard of Pathfinders. In Northern Indiana, we're a very large company. We, we have about four to 500 employees. And what we do mainly is group homes. So for the, for the handicapped. Um, so instead of having to live in an institution or, or be on the street, 
um, we have group homes that they can go into and Medicare and Medicaid obviously pay for that. Um, but even if we're running at 100% capacity, we don't get enough money from Medicaid and Medicare to cover uh, the bills uh, for the homes. So we have to do fundraisers. And one of the fundraisers is my company. So our profits go back in to helping people stay in a group home. So not only do people, are they not happy that, the, not only are people happy that they are able to get home, they're also happy that the money that they're giving out is actually going uh, to help somebody else too. So it makes a win-win for everybody and it's, a, it's an enjoyable uh, uh, way to earn a living. And when I put my head on the pillow at night, I, I feel good about it. Excellent, well, thank you, Jack. Dave, tell us who you are and what you do. Thanks, Jim. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Dave Holder, and I'm the owner of Assisted Living Locators of North Indy, and I'm a senior living advisor. And what does that mean? You can kind of think of me as almost like a senior living realtor or broker. So if you've ever had to transition a loved one or a parent into a senior living community, you know that there's a ton of emotions. There's a lot that goes into that, and it's a very overwhelming time. Well, I act as that resource to help you navigate those options. If you don't know where to start, you don't know the difference between independent living or assisted living, or you don't know the difference between a nursing home and assisted living, I will help you navigate all of those options. I work with you just like a realtor so you can understand those options, and I will provide recommendations that check the, most, the best boxes for you. And I don't stop there. I go on the tours with you. So I'm really there to make sure that you are understanding what that community has to offer from the care that they're going to provide from the long-term goals and of course the cost. I stay with you throughout the process. So my goal is at the end of this, you can make an educated and informed decision about the next steps for your loved one. And just like a realtor, when you go to buy a house, the seller pays the fees, it's no cost to the family. So my goal is also to keep you proactive to make this decision early, to start this process as soon as possible so you can make the right decisions. Thank you, Dave, that's great. Mona, would you tell us who you are and what you do? Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me on, Jim. My name is Mona Euler, and I'm the founder of A Healthcare Advocate. And I specialize in a couple things. Number one is senior care coordination. I'm a nurse and I have over 30 years of experience. I have been blessed to work in every aspect of healthcare, learning a lot through the way. And I'm sure you guys know it can be very confusing. Senior care coordination is so needed. People get overwhelmed. They don't understand who pays for what, if they can stay at home, if they should go to rehab, what the difference is. And a lot of times I will get clients in crisis that, you know, mom has fallen or dad has had a stroke. Nobody's really helping us through the process. We're overwhelmed. We don't know how we're gonna pay for it. We don't know what doctors we should use. I am there for them as an advisor. In fact, the name advocate means trusted advisor. So I, I liken it to a family member that you guys might have that you lean on for medical advice and that you trust them and you know that they're gonna have their best interests for you. That's how I feel about my clients. I've had clients that I've had for years in nursing homes, assisted living or at home. And I have had clients that will call me periodically if they have a healthcare crisis. So there's not a day go by goes by that I, don't love my job and love helping people solve their problems. I think I'm sort of like a quarterback of a team, but you guys are the team. I refer a lot out to other people. I keep your names and your companies in my toolbox and it's always changing. So that's a wonderful resource for my clients. The second thing that I do is help with Medicare. I help with Medicare Advantage, Medicare Supplement, long-term care plans. I'm a nurse, but also an independent agent. So it's wonderful to be able to explain that to individuals who don't understand what they should sign up for, or better yet, they don't even understand the services that they should be getting with their plans. So it's been a really nice fit with the clinical to have the Medicare and be able to explain that to clients. 
So I'm looking forward to listening tonight to the rest of you. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Sarah, tell us who you are and what you do. Hi there. Thank you, Jim. Happy to be here this evening. My name is Sarah Kendrick, and I have founded a business called Brea Services. And I thought that what I was going to have to share was going to be complicated, but y'all are doing a lot of stuff out there. So <laughs> my, my work is fairly straightforward when I think about it this way. Um, so there are two main things that I want to help families with. Um, number one, I want to make sure that they don't have to call the cable company while they're grieving. No offense to anybody who works at the cable company, but those are the kinds of details that I want to take on after someone has passed away so that the family doesn't have to do it. Kind of uh, assistant to the executor, if you will. Um, I'm able to take on some of those tasks, help them to get some of that work done so that they can focus on the more important pieces of being with their family or um, just managing life without their loved one. Um, I, I wanna help them find the resources that they need or basically whatever it is that they might need in, in that time, I wanna be able to help them and point them in the right direction. Just guide them along so they don't have to do it all by themselves. Uh, and then the second thing that I do, um, which I know is so important because of that other piece is, you know how there are certain things that we're the only person who knows them? Maybe it's the password for our email or how we pay a certain bill or it's what they actually feed the dog and how often um, or where to, where to take the dog to the vet. You know, there's, there, there are just different pieces that we're the only person who knows them. And that's not a problem until we're not there to answer the question of how do you do this or where do you find this bill or what are we paying? Uh, and so I have developed a book and a system where I meet with families virtually. And over the course of three sessions, we talk about everything. <laughs> we talk about finances and pets and kids if they've got them. We talk about, or pets if they've got them too. Um, we talk about uh, insurance and estate planning information. Where's your will? Do you have one? So basically it is a map that says, here's where all of my life details are and how you can find what you need if I'm not there to answer the question for you. So it came out of, you know, seeing my own family uh, have losses and, and not quite knowing where to find some of the pieces and what to do. And um, so that's what I'm doing. And, and that's how I hope to serve the community. Excellent. Thank you. And it's and from a professional standpoint, I was at a company where we had two real clear understandings. If you don't, that if somebody is also not there that knows the things that nobody else knows that can screw things up. You know, it's like we had a receptionist that quit and went back to school and all of a sudden all these things weren't getting done because people kept taking, giving her new things to do and no one knew she did those things. Okay. Yeah. So that becomes problematic. And we had a, uh, our VP of construction had a bad motorcycle wreck and he had everything in his head. That was terrifying. So we, we learned some really hard lessons on, on that, that I, you're doing it on a personal level, but it's the same stuff. Yeah. Well, and it's, we want to avoid, again, we want to avoid that emergency situation. Now is the best time. Yesterday was the best time to start gathering your information, but if you can't do it yesterday, which obviously you can't, let's start today. Um, so that way in that emergency situation, all you have to do is focus on getting well or taking care of your loved ones. You don't have to worry about all those pieces. We've already sorted them out. Very good. Tina, you're not last or, or least, so I'll let you come <laughs> in here and tell us who you are and what, what you do. Sure. I am Tina McIntosh. I'm president and founder of Joy's House. So when Jim hits the lottery and needs to uh, find some tax donations, he can come our way because we are a not-for-profit <laughs> organization. Uh, we do two different sides of our mission. Um, one is adult day services. We've been doing this for 23 years. And um, we are a place, for those who aren't familiar with Adult Day, we are a place where you bring your loved one or where you come, if you are the adult living with some kind of a life-altering diagnosis, um, you come and spend your days with us. So it's whatever schedule works for you. We're open Monday through Friday. We get to know who you are as a person. Uh, we do want to know what your struggles are, your challenges during the day, your limitations, your diagnoses and medicines and all those things. We also want to know what makes you uniquely you and um, hope you enjoy your days and find your community and, and help be a part of what gives you purpose to get up and get ready and get out of the house and 
and come and do your things during the day. And so that is one part of our mission. We have a location in Broderpool and at the University of Indianapolis. And then the second part is our caregiver support services. We've been doing this for, I don't even know at this point, well over a dozen years. But what happened is we saw caregivers, family caregivers who were financially, physically, emotionally um, struggling while doing one of the most loving and selfless and beautiful things in caring for their loved one. And so we developed caregiver support and service programs. We've partnered with many of you on, on the call and do that currently too. And there are some things right now on this side of COVID um, that we can't do the way we used to. So what we are really focusing on right now is what is it that caregivers need on this side of COVID? So we've got um, a handful of programs at, at the surface gym. I'll kind of stay high level with this right now, but we do have um, a care kit, which is a, a binder, a template, if you will, for caregiving. And so if anybody is interested in that, they can get a hold of us and we have that as a complimentary gift and it's a fantastic place to keep information and um, to be able to work with your medical team and your personal caregiving team. And then we this year will be launching um, Caregiver Way, which is a digital ecosystem, which when I hear those words, I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> but um, it is an online community for caregivers. And so for the folks that are on this call, I have no doubt we will be calling you to ask you to submit content for that. It will be a place for caregivers to not only get the referrals, it is really a community for the family caregivers. And so more on that to come. And then we are launching an end of life doula program as well. And we're really excited about um, what that will mean for the dying individuals and for their loved ones. And, you know, Sarah, I hear you introduce yourself and think, hey, yeah, we're getting together. I mean, like there, there's just so much to be done and um, we're really excited about helping to fill some of that gap for the caregivers. Well, excellent. I am very excited about this panel. I am going to take a point of uh, personal um, privilege on this because I never tell about who, what we do or whatever. So I'm going to, you know, I, I, I get to wear several hats throughout the day or through the week. And so I, I'm going to kind of take a couple of moments on those. How I got to meet most of you was through, um, um, I was asked to take over, I'd been advocating them and edifying them and evangelizing them from across the hall for, you know, and it was uh, carrying transitions. And then they asked me to step across the hall and, <laughs> and go out and meet people. In carrying transitions, we basically help people predominantly seniors it's not just seniors but we help people uh downsize we help them declutter we help them um you know pack move um sell stuff off clean out we do hoarders we've done you know you know so we do a pretty wide array of stuff you know last week we moved one person from the front of a, a community to the memory care part of a community we also that same day uh, cleaned out a unit in that same building that we had helped her move in a couple of years before and she had passed. And so we took stuff to her family members and to Goodwill. And then the next day we moved someone to Austin, uh, Texas, and the other day, the next day to Atlanta, Georgia. So we can do kind of a lot of different areas there to cover the different people's needs. Um, and then getting to know all of you guys through the caring transitions, this is kind of how this all came about. Frankly, I, you know, I think the only one I knew of this panel before I got into the senior world was Jeff Simpson because he was bailing me out of a, a mess I was into uh, with a family member. So, and I learned a huge lesson, Jeff, is I tried it several years before to do VA aid and attendance without uh, an elder law attorney, and it was a nightmare. And then, um, I actually had to do an act of Congress to get it resolved. <laughs> and then I had it with you and it was a whole different ballgame. So I, I'm a big advocate, big fan. But then I, when I go out and started meeting with you guys, we were having coffee and I started learning what you do, Tina. And I'd never heard of an adult day. I didn't know what, you know, all these different things were. And that is when Life's Copilot was born because and a lot of you were involved in the conversation of how to create it because I, if I didn't know this stuff after dealing with in-laws and parents and, and uncles and stuff for 20 years, I guarantee you a lot of people don't know this stuff and they're getting blindsided by it. So I wanted to create a platform like this where people could get at from information. So we do two of these panels a month. 
So we have a lot of content. We have a lot of your guys' blogs on here, you know, your videos on here. So people can go in here and learn these things. This video will be cut up into a dozen little pieces and sent out as well. You know, you know, the whole video will be out there, but we'll cut it up as well. And then I got a new hat that I've put on and it stays right in the same context. We have a uh, franchise for a uh, True Blue franchise, which is a handyman service. So we can do handyman services, we can do re remodels, we can do, we can fix a house up that somebody needs to sell, we can fix a house up that so people can age at home safely, we can um, create um, um, maintenance service, we can come in and mow your garden, shovel your snow and change your filters and, you know, do general handyman stuff. We can take care of your landscaping. We can do your cleaning, bring maid services in. We can do, you know, so there's lots of things that we can do along that category. Landscaping, um, home safety. So we've got a lot, you know, I could go on and on about the things that it can do. So my days are interesting because I never know what hat I'm wearing at any given time of the day, but it's a bit of blast. And what I have found is I'm in someone's house on one and all of a sudden I'm going, oh, we really need to talk about this as well. You know, so, and I'm always bringing you guys with me with Life's Copilot, pushing you guys out to people that need you. So, so, but that's kind of, I wanted this, this particular panel to cover a lot of bases, to let people know there's, and we had some people that at the last minute couldn't make it because of either a client or one of them was illness. So we, you know, there's more stuff out here. This is not the be all end all of what senior services there are. And one of the reasons that Life's Copilot exists is because I got mad one day, okay? <laughs> and it is um, a news media was promoting this story about this family. It was not a local story, but it was salacious. So, you know, they liked it. It was a senior family that committed suicide because they were just overwhelmed with medical bills, and not know what to do with it. And I'm like, I get it. You know, I get how that can be, uh, you know, a problem. But we're not lacking services. We're not lacking resources. We're not lacking providers or programs. We're lacking the knowledge they exist and then how to access them. And so that is why you're all here today was to, to try to, to touch base on some of that stuff. And that's what I'm excited about doing and trying to make these messages. Several of you mentioned about caregivers, you know, and, and supporting caregivers. And I think a lot of people don't realize that the caregiver needs that support as much as the person being cared for. Uh, some stats I heard, one that blew me away is one in three households has someone that's a caregiver in that, you know, taking care of someone that has some level of disable, you know, in that household. Another thing I heard that blew me away was that 65, or about 60, almost 65% of people who are caregivers die before the person they're caring for, for the 24 hour 365 stress. And the other one that blew me away was that millennials, you know, people don't think of millennials, you know, as a caregiver, but one in six is caring for, for an elder family member. And that, if you do the math, that's 12 million. Okay, so that's, that's a pretty big number. So let's go into a little bit into the caregivers, because, you know, since several of you really cover that basis, tell me, you know, I don't care who wants to start, I don't care, you know, it could be, you know, Lisa or, or, you know, or Belinda, you're in the home care, and, and you know, and, and uh, Tina, what, what kind of things that would you like to, some messaging we need to get to that caregiver? Number one, anyway, um, you number one, I just, there are so many spouses and, and family members, friends, neighbors that are caregivers, but they don't feel or understand that they are a caregiver. And they think they're just stepping up and helping, but they're truly a caregiver. And I just wish they were all aware of all the resources that are out there. And all of you do tremendous things. And I, I mean, Jim, exposure is everything. And I just know that if, you know, you mentioned the elderly couple that, you know, they just didn't think there was any other way out. There's always a way out. And between the experts that are on here and elder law, I, like I cannot tell you how grateful I am for elder law and just my other partners, because it takes all of us. But there are so many resources out there that just people aren't aware of. Anybody else want to tag in on that one or? 
Yeah, I would like to just um, bring forth the concept that caregiver burnout, as you mentioned, Jim, can um, ha have devastating consequences. So, we, and it's especially important when the demand of family caregiving starts to take a toll on the caregiver's health. Um, they, they get exhausted, they lose sleep, they have poor appetites, they don't even, may not even have time to eat. And um, they ended up, end up getting sick and, and staying sick longer. And then they defeated the whole purpose of what they were trying to accomplish. There was a study done in 2018 um, that showed 41% of family caregivers experience depression, mood swings, and resentment. They're physically worn out. And I see this with my mom now, who's been taking care of my dad, who has dementia up in um, Minnesota. And um, I just want those caregivers to know you shouldn't feel guilty. You're, you're trying to do the right thing, but if you're suffering from any of those problems, you should try and get a little help. We don't need to come in and take over, but we can give you some relief. It's great if you can be a wife instead of a caregiver, a worn out caregiver who's sick and run down. And that is a gift that we can give back just by coming in maybe during the night if you're not getting sleep during the day, we can come in 24 seven. Anytime that someone is needed, Amada Senior Care can come in, and that's why we opened this business. And, and the, the meaning of Amada is um, it's a family, it's a Spanish term of endearment for the word beloved. And that's the, um, the concept that we want to try and convey to our caregivers as well as our clients. So it's okay, okay to ask for help, and we can do it in small or big chunks whatever you need, and it's okay to ask for help. You can't take care of someone else if you don't have the time to take care of yourself. Very good. Tina, can, I, you, yeah. can I add on to that, Jim? Joe, absolutely. Uh, the caregivers that are out there are listening to this uh, quite often are very conscious about spending the person's money worried about spending money and they don't want to so they'll try to do everything they can do to save money for the the person they're taking care of um and i understand that but i've seen it to a detriment so much they 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 were like i'll try and get him up to steps with a wheelchair it's like you want to pull a man up steps or or a woman up the steps you're you're gonna wear out and so many times I, I, I see caregivers uh, put themselves, like you said, in the grave because they're trying too hard. Um, and so when I come in, there's many times um, that they'll want me to be there, but they hate to spend the money. And I can understand that. But as you said, it's going to you're just going to wear out yourself faster and uh, not be a help to anybody. Um, and the other thing about, I get many times where they say, well, he can still get up a step. Well, okay, but it's going to come a time when he can't or she can't. Do you want the ramp in before that time comes or do you want it after when they fall? Um, every 11 seconds, a senior goes into an emergency room because they fell. The number one cause of death in the United States. This can't actually be proven because there, you never die of a fall. You die of a head injury or that. But the number one reason for death on, in seniors is falling. It may not be instantaneous. It may be in the hospital with a broken hip and they never get out. Uh, or they never recover. Um, but the number one cause of death for seniors are, are is falling. And so they you really have to consider all these things uh, in terms of taking care of yourself and in terms of taking care of uh, uh, the, the per person you're, you're, you're looking after. I agree. 
And honestly, if if finances are the concern, there are a lot of resources that, you know, for example, I didn't realize that you could use the equity in your home. If you don't have a, gr a big um, checking or savings account, but you can start to draw against the equity of your home without losing your home, or you can maybe use a life insurance policy. If you're 80 years old, your children are probably in their 50s and 60s. They're not waiting for a long uh, life insurance payout. There are a lot of options. Um, also for veterans and their spouses, there's the aid and attendance benefit that others have referred to. There are a lot of financial resources out there that people may not be aware of, and we can help with all of those. Very good. Jim, I'll add one more thing. Um, it, this is a little tough love for caregivers, but I hear a lot of caregivers over time say that they feel alone, that they're doing this alone, that they're by themselves. And I understand that sometimes that is truly the case. They are the only person caring for their loved one. A lot of times it's because caregivers don't allow other people in, don't know how to allow them in, don't choose to allow them in, you know, whatever it is. And so there's so much advice I know that we could all give to caregivers. If I could give one piece of advice, it would be let people in. You know, when people love you or even when they just care about you a little, they want to show love. Often they want to show love by doing something, whether it's a gift card, it's bringing you a meal, it is running your errands for you, it is you know, mowing the lawn, um, joining you in prayer, whatever it is. And so when somebody asks you what they can do to help, I always tell care caregivers, have a couple things ready and be very specific. And you know, some of you have heard me say it before, but it's okay to say, Lisa, I would love your help, thank you. If you could bring dinner maybe Wednesday night to six o'clock and we're really tired of casserole, um, but be very specific with people and allow them in, allow them to be a part of your journey. Excellent. Well, you know, one of the things too that you bring to the table is something I don't think a lot of people are aware of is really what adult day is. It's, it's, it's a reprieve during the day. Maybe they're, they're a caregiver, but they want to, they, they still have to work or they have, you know, they're, 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 that's, you are an option, you know, uh, you know, uh, Linda, you've got home care that you can bring in, but there's different options. But the, the adult day is a option. It's not a babysitting service from what I mean. It's, it's, could you kind of you know, tell us what an adult day is? Yeah, you know, uh, it's funny you say that because I, I, there is a comparison to child care. If we're being, you know, realistic about the setup of adult day service, we're set up like child care is. I mean, people come to be with us during the day so they can go home and live with their loved ones for as long as they're able. We hope they're with us until the, the day they draw their last breath. Like that's a, a huge moment for us when we know we've been able to keep families together as long as possible. Um, so adult day is, yeah, it's where you come. If you have some kind of a life altering diagnosis, sometimes it's just that people are getting really old. We had one gal who I think she was 104 at the time she died. She was a complete liar and she always told people she was 92. <laughs> <laughs> years to catch on but you know um but I, I you know Jim I've heard people say before like oh you work with older adults so you guys just sit around and you're super sad and drooling and waiting to die and I tell people um no that's not true we are a place to live your life and we're sad sometimes because we're human and we drool sometimes because sometimes some of us just drool um, and, you know, we are not sitting around waiting to die, but our hope is that we are, we have a purpose because that's what it really comes down to is we all want purpose until our last breath. And so that's what we do at Joy's House. Well, thank you. I was going to say one thing I wanted to, to bring up too, Dave, I'm going to bring you in on this one. It's, if you really want to tick me off, okay, <laughs> you know, somebody really wants to, you know, to see me get surly okay is when someone goes well i would never put my mom or dad into an assisted living or whatever it's not you know whatever first of all they don't know what the difference is between assisted living or scum whatever and it doesn't matter which one it is is what what do they need okay is what it comes down to and i always say come back and talk to me about that when you have you're facing the circumstances okay so then we'll then we'll have a more intelligent conversation but there are circumstances like in ours we're never home so having them at our house really doesn't do any good. Then we're going to have to have care in all the time anyway, you know, so we're never home. And 
so the, there's needs that are there. So it's kind of one of those things that, Dave, I would have literally killed to have known you, <laughs> you know, when I was first looking for this. Could you kind of go through that process with people? I mean, you know, people are kind of coming to the point where they're going, I just can't do this anymore. I am on several, which if you really want to get yourself depressed, I'm on several um, caregiver uh, support groups on Facebook. And that's a really good place to get depressed when you sit there and listen to the people, what they're going through, you know, and, and they really are kind of the blind leading the blind because the advice they give each other is horrific, you know, um, because they don't really know they, they're not watching a video like with you guys, you know, so, but so many times they get to the point where they finally come to the realization, I can't do this anymore. I, you know, mom needs more care, you know, dad needs more care. A lot of times it might be a, uh, dementia issue or what have you as well. Could you explain what, I mean, I, I, I best put you in as like a buyer's agent for a realtor you, you, you know, you right, want, right. You know, to help people find the right spot. So kind of help me understand if I'm a, if I'm a, you know, if I've got a mom or dad that needs care, how are you going to help me find that? Well, we're going to, we're going to have, so I, I don't, try to answer this so my background is uh landscaping i was almost probably going to be mowing the yards jim was going to be <laughs> as my background and um my, we went through this with my with my in-laws my my father-in-law had a diagnosis dementia we had no idea what resources were out there and we waited way too long until honestly it was a really bad week and then it was a mad scramble to figure out where to go where i can come in and be a resource to families is if there is a diagnosis of dementia or should we go to assisted living, I will help you understand what the differences all of those have to offer. And then we'll talk in real depth about what activities does mom like? What is dad? What's important to the family? What is a type of community? Do you want to be in assisted living that has independent in the same building? What are the aesthetics that you like? We'll really break down all of those things according and of course, cost and all of that. And then I'll provide recommendations for them and then take them on tours and really be the boots on the ground, hold their hand through that whole process, um, being that advocate, a little bit of family therapist. Um, some cases I've been a bartender, um, whatever I need to be for the family so they can make a, that a really good decision about the next steps. And just to piggyback on um, what Tina was talking about, the caregiver, um, we have a uh, same client and I was working with the wife whose husband that she took to Joy's house he had dementia did not want to go but we had to do that in, in order for her to go to tour and that first day of touring the phone blew up all the time he was not happy he did not want to be there next week got a little bit better but he still called a lot we had one more community to tour she called me and said Dave we can go any of uh, three days next week because he called me and said, can we go to that place? I'm really enjoying myself there. I wanna go there three days now. So when this lady came to tour this last place, she was completely different. She was not frazzled. She was not overwhelmed. Um, she was at calm and that's the, the piece that Joy's house can give. I had to insert that plug there because that it was just awesome. But that's where we can be proactive and help families, all of us on this panel, so. That's excellent. And, and I can sit in the backyard in the, in the patio at Joy's house any day of the week with a day like today, I would be out there right. all day. So it's <laughs> amazing. So um, now all this stuff we're talking about costs money. Okay. And people freak out and they're scared and stuff. And so I'm going to bring Jeff and Rebecca in. You don't have to be poor to get help from what I understand. There's things you can do. So I'll let you guys kind of bring in. I mean, you know, Jeff, you opened my eyes back, you know, years ago, you know, and then, you know, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. So I, I would love to have you guys kind of rest, help people rest assured that they can do this in most cases. Absolutely. I, you know, the first thing that just stood out to me on this panel is we, we have nobody from the nursing home industry here, and there's nothing wrong with a nursing home. They're suitable for, to certain individuals, but for far too long, we've had an institutional bias. And I am so pleased to see that everyone here is, is home and community-based alternatives to nursing home care. Um, 
I'll, I'll, I'll age myself a little bit and Rebecca can chime in if, if she'd like, but I can recall a time when clients would come to see me and, you know, the asset protection is great. Oh, we can protect assets for, for take an elder centered approach as well as protect an inheritance as kind of a, a, a byproduct to that. Um, but for far too long, I've had to discuss, okay, but if you want this help from a public benefits program, you're going to have to place your parent in a nursing home. And I can say I'm more than confident that the number of public benefits asset protection plans that I do now more center around a home and community-based alternative than nursing home care. Most folks were looking at home care or assisted living or adult daycare. And that just tickles me to death um, because it, it broke my heart, frankly, to say, okay, you're out of money, you need help, go to nursing home. Um, now we don't have to say that anymore. That didn't answer the question though. So to, to get to your question, Jim, no, you don't have to be completely impoverished in order to qualify for programs. Um, I primarily work with VA and pension, pro, the, the VA pension program and the Medicaid system when we're looking at resources to help pay for care. And what's important to know about both of those programs that I, even though they have resource limits and income limits, you can legally plan to protect your assets to fit within those limits. And that's because both of those programs, a couple of things, they've developed safe harbors. There are certain things that don't count towards an asset limit. So sometimes you can plan by simply taking something in this bucket that counts and reinvesting it into the safe harbor exempt bucket. Um, another strategy is simply to look at, okay, let's get some things out of that person's name. Let's make transfers. Now, yes, everyone's heard you make a transfer, there's a look back period and there's a period of time of ineligibility, but we can use those rules to the advantage of the person where oftentimes we're saving at least half and usually more of, of their total net worth in a crisis. Um, that's just a couple examples of folks that meet here right away. If we're looking at folks that are, you know, their 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 late 60s, you know, early 70s concern about well, what happens if we need help in the future? What how's that going to impact our net worth, which has kind of become the single biggest expense to jeopardize someone's savings? We can look at look much more aggressive strategies as well. Um, but the point being, yes, you can still have your house. Yes, you can still work to save an inheritance for your family. Yes, you can still have the farm. Yes, you can still have some things and qualify for Medicaid. You don't have to get through all of those things. Same thing with VA. You can have those things and without being completely destitute. You know, one of the, the thing is by hanging out with you and Rebecca and, and learning these things is like, I have a family member that when his community became Medicaid waiver eligible, I have to tell you, I slept pretty well going, you know, I don't have to worry about any of this. You know, <laughs> you know, if, you know if he runs out of cash, I'm, I, he doesn't have to run out of cash is what it comes down to. And I'm, you know, cause I mean, you know, you're always kind of counting, you've got X amount of years at this rate, you know, type thing. Mm -hmm. And also it's kind of like, oh, well, <laughs> We got this handle. So, Rebecca, you want to fill in, go in on some of this? Or? Yeah. Well, first, I have to say, if Jeff says that, you know, this is going to take him back and he's old, only in this setting would I admit I'm older than him. So, <laughs> him. I wasn't, going to, I, I wasn't going to admit that. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I have to say that that is true. 23 years of practicing in this area of the law, no one has ever come into my office and said, I can't wait to spend all of my savings on the cost of long term care in any form. So I would reiterate that there are so many things that we can do in order to keep your loved one independent. And that, if, if you take away nothing else from this conversation, I think that really underscores all of our presentations in that this is us being a resource to help caregivers uh, remain sane and keep their loved ones independent as long as possible and to help those in need remain independent. 
And there are things within the law here in Indiana that do that as well. When I first started practicing, there were a lot more conversations, as Jeff mentioned, where we say your only option is to go to a nursing home. We don't have that now. We have an age in place program in Indiana and have for many years that can provide assistance through uh, the state through Medicaid, or you can get potentially benefits through the VA. If you have someone who served in the armed forces to assist with care costs, and that could be care at home, care in an assisted living facility, and nursing facility really has become only a service of last resort in a situation where people can really no longer in any way uh, be independent in a less restrictive environment. But there's so many myths that exist out there as to what happens if someone needs care. To this day, I'm shocked no matter how many times I've spoken about this or been a part of other presentations and heard others say the same thing. Not a week goes by that I don't have someone call me and say, you know, my husband is uh, in need of services. And I heard that the only way that I can remain uh, having enough money to live on is if we divorce. Well, there should be no need to divorce in the state of Indiana. There are so many other options and things that the law permits that allows a spouse who has a spouse in need of care to retain, you know, oftentimes all of the assets that the couple may have saved. So the most important thing to know is that people like myself and all the other providers on this Zoom presentation can do is point you in the right direction to all of the resources and services that are available to make sure that your loved one has the most appropriate care arrangement, remains independent for as long as possible, and we can utilize their resources in a manner that is going to provide for them in the best way possible, but not impoverish the entire family. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's... If you win the lottery, Jim, I do want to circle back near the end of this presentation. I have collected two $15 million lottery winnings on behalf of clients. I have a big check to prove it. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, when it gets some of the 300 million, I'm like, okay, I'll buy it. I'll put $2 down. So, you know, what the heck? So, but, uh, you know, you never know. Uh, I, I figure your odds go up way, the, way big. The first one and the second one probably doesn't do a thing to it at all. So, you know, <laughs> no, anyway, so, so Mona, I was going to have you kind of, you, you cover so many things that you do. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out, um, in my brain, I still think of you, I, I've got a gal that, that works with us that, that she, she calls herself a nurse advocate. That is kind of, mm -hmm. and so I, I have that programmed into my brain. Okay. I could not live without this woman. I, you know, she, she, she takes care of my mom. She takes care of my uncle. She keeps all that medical stuff together. So all I have to do is ask her and she gives me a rundown. I don't really have to know much, which is one. And I get to work and get to wear all these hats that I talk about all day. So tell me when, I didn't know until we stumbled into her, we just got lucky. How does someone, you know, they, people I don't even know, there's people like you that come out here and basically play quarterback. Yeah, the, there's not very many of us, um, believe it or not, that have done this. And really you need the expertise of understanding the different levels of care and the clinical complexities. And it develops over time. And I have just gained that knowledge over a number of years. We're not highly advertised. We don't have a collective body per se, because we're called different things. Sometimes it's a nurse advocate. Sometimes it's a senior care coordinator, a healthcare advocate. But the one thing that do, we do share is that we try to do the best by our clients. We try to help solve their healthcare issues, Jim. And so that's one thing, word of mouth. I get most of my clients, believe it, or, believe it or not, through word of mouth. They go to church, they talk to their family members, their neighbors, and then they give me a call. It is so important as we age in America and the silver tsunami, I'm personally concerned about the number of caregivers that we're going to need as we age, as we get older in the coming years. And I'm sure you guys are as well. There won't be enough facilities and we want to keep people at home. That's our number one goal, but we need caregivers to do that. And we need senior care coordinators to help with that, the prescriptions and help with all the doctors and who do they need to see first and what kind of adult daycare or in-home is available. It's truly, you know, you can't just Google one. There are a couple of associations um, that are out there, but word of mouth is a big factor on how we get contacted. And the need is so great. I just got two texts while we were on the 
you know, call right now and somebody at home that's, um, you know, concerned about the caregiver that they've got and, you know, with whether they need to go to the hospital. So the need is there um, for more of us. And I hope um, as a nation and an association of healthcare advocates that we can get to that point that we have more of them and more associations um, so that we can help more people. Well, we, like I said, we just got dumb lucky. She was also doing some massage on the side at, at this the, uh, assisted living place my mom was at. That's how we met her. I didn't know such people existed. And that's why I'm thrilled that people are going to find out that you exist, that there are these people. That, because literally, it's changed our lives. I mean, it's just been mm -hmm. the, the you know best thing we've ever had. So, so that's huge. Lisa, your company, I absolutely am in love with, okay, I think what you guys are doing is truly amazing. I had no idea somebody was out there doing that, where you basically are supporting that. Tell me, you've got your app, you do, what, how do you, what's your support team do for that caregiver? So a couple things. I actually just messaged you because I think I just one, saw that. Yeah, I did. Just one, of, one of the greatest things, and you know, I come from long-term care. I worked in the skilled nursing industry for a very, very long time. And a couple of years ago, somebody came knocking on my door telling me about this home and community-based caregiver focused service. And the fact that individuals are not aware that there are services out there for caregivers. And if they look at the individual they're caring for, the payer source. So when there's Medicaid, there are all kinds of benefits that come along with that. When there's the waiver, there are all kinds of benefits. You were talking about that caregiver not, you know, wanting to spend all their money or being very money conscious. You know, there are services that payers will provide. And the Medicaid waiver provides for structured family caregiving, which is what caregiver homes is. And we can pay that caregiver while that even caregiver- Even a spouse, is, right? Even a spouse, anybody, as long as they are 18 years old or older and can pass a background check. We do a background check on every caregiver just to make sure there's no abuse or neglect charges on their name because we want our individual safe. But they can be on board with our program we communicate with that caregiver on a daily basis. Yes, through an app and we can communicate with them in three different ways. They, they call their care team, they can message that care team or if they get up in the morning and there's something going on with the individual they're caring for and they want our nurse to, to see, we do a virtual visit, COVID prevented or allowed for that to happen. We had to be able to see our families. So we can do that virtual visit, but that caregiver can be paid, go to work, drop their loved one off at adult day at Joy's house, do their business at work and pick them up and come home. And they're still the paid caregiver. And, and that that's many services can do that. We can work in collaboration together, whether it's home health, working with us, a hospice group, like many of us can work together while supporting that family. And I just, you know, that's my mission is to make sure those individuals are aware of everything that's out there. That's awesome. Like I said, when I first found out about you guys, I just couldn't believe that such a thing existed. I mean, it's just, you know, who, who knew, you know, so that's, and I guarantee not enough. No. Okay. So that's that. Sarah, you have to clean up the mess. So that's, I, I've been there. I've done that several times and there's, you know, trying to find everything that's hidden in the drawers and everything that's, you know, hidden behind, you know, whatever. The mat, under the mattress, you know, whatever it is, you did it, I know, because of your, your own family member, you, you, you kind of came into that. So tell me, when you're walking into a family, they're already emotionally crashed, okay, and they may not be thinking clearly, they may not, you know, and all this other stress just becomes more so. Could you walk me through how you get someone from point A to sanity? Well, <laughs> we do our best. Um, and certainly it's, it's with, with other good team members, of course, right? Um, so, and in, in really it's, it's two different times when, when I might be really, really helpful. Um, so if at all possible, like let's do that pre-planning work. Let's make sure that your family has what they need ahead of time. Let's get that book together. Let's get that information. So that I, and I do, I even have a spot for hidden valuables <laughs> in my book because 
you know, I've heard stories about like somebody was doing an estate clean out and they found like five grand in a cookie tin. Family didn't know about it. It would have been donated, but thank goodness, you know, this person found it and was able to get it back to the attorney who got it back to the family. Um, you know, things like that happen all the time. There are just pieces that get lost. There are accounts that people forget about or, or don't know to look for. Um, so let's make sure as much as possible, that's going to be something that will be so helpful to your family is having those details managed, having things written down. We talk about end of life planning and what do you want and how would you want things to be done for you? It's not fun conversation, certainly, but it's, it's a really good way to care for our loved ones. And that's really what we're trying to do. Um, and then on the other side of things, after someone has passed away, um, depending on what kind of information we're working with, um, I'm able to take what they can find from, from you know, the different documents that they have or, or do, and, and kind of move things forward. So it's just smoothing out the edges of things because the family is overwhelmed. Grief is, it affects us in so many different ways. Um, it's not just, you know, I mean, it affects us physically, it affects us mentally. There's just, there, brain fog is a thing because of grief. And, and there's just, if you're trying to process all of these pieces, it's, you get to do one or the other, you can't do both. Either you have to put on your business hat and you don't get to grieve until later because it will catch up with you or you grieve, but you know, the business pieces fall apart. Maybe your family um, doesn't get what they need or you can't pay the bills on time or, you know, different things like that. So I'm able to come alongside them and, and just take over some of those smaller pieces and kind of cancel things on their behalf. You know, how, how many people have the option to sit on hold for 45 minutes to get through to the customer service to even tell them that somebody has passed away and they need to close things down. Um, that's something I'm able to do on their behalf so that they don't have to kind of spend all their time and energy doing that work. So just trying to streamline things as much as possible and happy to have a conversation with anybody. And I think that's what I'll close with is I think most of us would say, just reach out, ask questions, be willing to be willing to ask, um, because I think that I can speak on behalf of most of the people here uh, or all of us really, we're here to help. That's really our goal is we want to provide a service. We want to benefit those that we're working with. So we're all really nice. Go ahead and just like give us a call and <laughs> we'll help you out the best that we can. Sarah, well, I'm you. curious, uh, can you help people who live um, in other states or do you need to go into the home? To I do be not. Able to... Okay. Yeah, that's a great question. No, um, yeah. so all the work that I do is done virtually. Um, and so I'm able to help people wherever they are. In fact, Mona, I see that she's smiling. She referred me to someone who, uh, a woman who passed away in Kansas. Her daughters needed some help finding the resources they needed there. So I was able to do that research on their behalf and kind of find them the estate cleanout company. I don't live in Kansas. I live in Indiana here with you all. Um, but I was able to do the research for them so that they didn't have to do that. And that's the kind of thing that I can help with um, on the other side of things too. Yeah. So for the pre-planning or for the estate closure, anywhere they live, as long as they can make those time zones work, I can help. That's great to know. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Well, guys, thank you so much. As, as like all of these, they get way too fast. This is a big panel, so it was hard to, to, to get it all in here. But And just think, this is just to give people an idea. There's a lot of help out here. There's a lot of people that will do things to help you get through these different processes. We did not have any senior living communities on here. We did not have any, you know, hospice. We didn't have palliative. We didn't, there's lots of things we didn't have on here. We can do lots of them. But the point is I'm trying to make is don't try to go this alone. You've got help that can help you through all these different categories. Anybody have anything you want to say before we call this a night? I did just want to say in terms of um, financial support, if you have the opportunity to purchase long-term care insurance, I don't sell it. So I'm not trying to sell anybody anything. It is a great way to protect your assets because that will pay for your care instead of draining all of your uh, personal wealth that you've built up over the years. Um, you have to be healthy 
to be able to get a long-term care insurance policy, but the people that we deal with who have it are so grateful that they made that decision in the past. So it's something to think about if, uh, if you know somebody who has an opportunity to do that earlier in life. I, I would agree totally, Belinda, because I've never had a client. I mean, I help people select the policy, but I also help them when they do have one in place and have never once had somebody say they regret it. In fact, the children have all been so thankful that their yes. parents decided to do that. Absolutely agree. Thank you. Guys, thank you so much for being here. This video I'll be sending out to each one of you so you can use it however you want to do it. And of course, the members you have access to the ones that will cut up in the back of the of Life's Copilot. So anyway, thank you so much for being here. Uh, the next one we have coming up, we have a, a she's a senior uh, realtor specialist and she'll be doing a, this will be coming up on a couple Thursdays away and she'll be doing uh, working with seniors uh, helping seniors through the whole process of business side so that's coming up so anyway I will talk to all you guys later thank you for coming and, and participating see you guys bye-bye thank you thank you